Hello everyone, happy Thursday. Thanks for joining. I'm Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time when we can relax and craft together, uh, work on crafting happy life for about an hour every evening. Uh, so we work on projects through from beginning to end. And today is New Block Thursday on the Splendid Sampler 2 uh, quilt along. So there are 100 blocks total and the first 20 are free. Uh, you can find out more information at thesplendidsampler.com uh, and uh, the, the rest of the uh, blocks, the rest of the 80 are going to be in the book when it comes out, I think November-ish. Uh, let me know if you guys remember when it comes out. Uh, so it's at thesplendidsampler.com and uh, the people who've started it, Jane and Pat, have let me uh, work on it again with you guys. So here we are, block 12. We are doing block 12 by Irene Blanc. It is called Free as a Bird, and it is adorable applique. I know, Terry, it's another applique block. They do seem to be heavily putting the applique up front. My guess is that maybe once we get into the book, there wasn't, there uh, wouldn't be so much applique, but who knows? I think, you know, so it looks like they're picking blocks that are on the cover of the book and maybe they put a lot of applique, a lot of applique ones on the cover just because, I don't know, they're extra cute with the applique. So who knows? Maybe it'll be more piecing once we get into it. But yep, it's another applique block and I'm going to be doing it a uh, raw edge applique. So raw edge applique is a super fast and easy way to do uh, applique versus like needle turn applique or some other variation of needle turn where you have to stitch it all down by hand. We've been doing a lot of those and I really want to get another block done as fast as possible. Uh, so we're going to just do, uh, uh, we're going to do raw edge applique for this. So you do need a fusible web. I'm going to use the steam a seam two, which I've only used a couple times here. Uh, so I've got to wrap my head around it again, but you want a fusible web that has the paper on one side and the glue dots on the other. And then you can iron that down and then take the paper off. And then the other side is also, I got a fusible on it. Uh, it should say uh, good for applique and stuff like that on there. Um, I put the link to the steam a seam too, uh, which is what I'll be using tonight. I put a link to that in the post here. So anyway, check out the block. It is still free at thesplendidsampler.com. And here we go. Let's do some raw edge applique for this cute little birdie. Okay, turned around. You just saw a very nice block 12 on the Splendid Sampler 2 site. Yes, so if you go to... If you go to uh, uh, the on Facebook, do a search for the Splendid Sampler, you'll see all the blocks that people are working on, and I'm sure there's um, tons. There's probably hundreds of these blocks already already done. Uh, the Facebook group has over, I think, thirty thousand people in it, so it's crazy, crazy the amount of people. All right, so this is Steam a Seam Two, double stick fusible web. So the fusible web it has a paper on one side, and then the fusible on both. This one, the Steam a Seam 2, has the extra bonus that both sides are, have like a double stick like tape on it almost. So not only is it fusible, it's also sticky when I, um, when I set it down. So I can move pieces around, I can kind of remove them and they'll stay on the fabric. Uh, they'll stay in the fabric ready to go. Uh, before I press it. So that's kind of nice. So, okay, I'm going to start by just drawing all our pieces and then I will pick out fabric. So there's so many pieces in here that I think I'll just decide, okay, what do I want my bird to be? Maybe what do I want my stem to be? And maybe a wing. And then I think I'm going to dig into my scraps that I've made on this project so far, and then maybe find some of these smaller bits. But to start out, um, I'm going to, 
just trace some of, of these designs. So for raw edge applique, you actually need to do the reverse of the pattern. And since they don't have the reverse here, this is the correct side. I have my, my light table out here. Uh, I put a link to a light table on this post too for you guys. It just makes things a, a hair easier, especially I printed mine on color uh, paper, which is a little thicker, so it's hard for me to see through. So there we go. Okay. So this, is, this always confuses me, this steam -a seam because there's actually a paper on both sides. But I'm going to treat this side with the um, yellow grid. I'm going to treat that as if there's no paper on there, like a normal uh, fusible web. So I'm going to flip it to the paper side. I'm going to pretend there's no paper, and then paper. Oh, um, Irene, just tape it up to a bright window and trace it. I mean, sometimes you might not even need a light table. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here, here I just have like really thick paper, but so see, I just, um, if I'm holding it up to a window, I'm holding it up to my lights right now, that should be enough to see through it. So don't need a light table. It just happens to be nighttime here. So I don't have a bright, a bright, um, window, but some people have taken a, like a cooking pan, one of those clear cooking pans for like casseroles. And uh, they've put that, a light underneath there. And uh, um, that's how some people have done it. So I'm gonna just trace all these shapes. The dotted lines on here are where the shape goes underneath other shapes. So I'm gonna continue that line. Um, so like the bird body doesn't, it doesn't stop here and then go like, go in. It goes all the way down and around. So that's, that's what I'm going to trace. And I'm gonna trace directly on the line. And there is this little edge here. So if we, if we look at this, there's this dotted line here. That's actually a little bias tape strip. Uh, but I'm not going to do it that way. <laughs> I'm going to just do it with more steam -a seam just for the sake of getting the job done. We've done a lot of other appliques. And... Uh, uh, right now, I just really would like to get this moved along as fast as possible. I'm, I'm anxious to, we're going to do quilt as you go, and I want to get one more block done uh, so I can start the quilt as you go process. So I'm, I'm just itching to get, itching to get some blocks done. And I think this one we could uh, get going on pretty quickly. So I... I, uh, when you're tracing these, make sure to leave a little gap. You don't want them butted up right, right up against each other, but they can be close. Like I put like maybe almost a quarter inch in between. All right, this one, there's a little dotted line that goes up to here. So trace as best you can, because you're going to ultimately cut right on these lines. There's a lot of, you know, pre-work on this one to get all the little shapes cut out and everything. But I do still think raw edge applique is ultimately faster than, the fastest way to applique. So that's, that's what I'm doing today. This bird is so cute though. And there's a lot of pieces. And like I said, I just don't want to, I don't want to choose them all, all at once. So that's why I'm prepping prepping a lot of this uh, first. Prepping and then we can decide along the way how things look. All right, there's a leaf, we got another leaf here. So I'm not gonna be working on this tomorrow because tomorrow is the first Friday of the month and on the first Friday of the month we have finish it Friday which is uh, a day where we can just pull out a project we haven't worked on in a while something from the the depths of the craft bin and uh, and uh, work on that instead just get a little bit further on a project so I have this little fold 
in this paper that's annoying. I wonder if I lift this up if I can get rid of it. No. Just kind of try and squish that. So yeah, tomorrow I think I might work on my I Love Home quilt. Uh, it was the quilt by Jacqueline Steves that we worked on a while back. And I am not done with it. I have the, I have the top done, but I want to sew together the scraps to make the back. So I think we will just do some improv piecing tomorrow. I think that's, that's my plan. So some improv piecing with some pretty fabric that will ultimately be the back of uh, my I Love Home quilt. So if you want like a little lesson in improv piecing, that's what we'll be doing most likely tomorrow. Oh, I did not make it to the fair, Irene. Instead, I went home and visited my parents. <laughs> so that, that worked out better for me. It's fun doing that. Ooh, we got this couple little perfect circles here. I'm gonna have to be extra careful tracing and cutting those out. I think I already made it a little oblong, but we're okay. I'm trying to fit them all in here. But again, I don't want them to, I don't want my objects to touch. I need a little gap because we're gonna cut them out with a gap and put them on our fabric with the gap with a tiny little seam allowance around it because we don't want to, we want, we want a little bit of an edge before we cut um, out on the line. So, all right, I have um, three more pieces here, I think, right? Yeah, I got all the bird's wings, circle, circle, leaf, leaf, stem. Okay, yeah, just these. Oh, this is just one piece. So this is just a big triangle and a, a smaller bit on top. Well, not, not quite a triangle, a, a truncated triangle. How about that? Triangle with the tip lobbed off there. All right. And final one. Oh, the large one is the size of a quarter. So you could do, uh, that's what Gretchen is saying. So you could, you could use that a quarter as a guide and, and uh, get a perfect circle. Got to go to the dotted line. Okay, we have all the pieces cut on there. So it's actually not, you know, it's not too bad. It didn't take up too much. I'm, I'm still using a scrap of this steam -a seam So, oops, switches on the other side. There we go. So I've done it in reverse so that when we glue it onto the back or when we press it onto the back of the fabric, when we flip it to the front of the fabric, then our bird will be looking the right direction. But you know what? If this, if your bird ends up in the opposite direction, uh, I'm thinking that'll be perfectly, perfectly fine. It will look just as cute. Okay. Oops, hold on guys. All right, we're back. Thanks, thanks you guys. So here we go, I'm getting a little warm. Let's pull those sleeves back. All right, so we finished that step where we uh, traced the designs in reverse. So now we need to trim them, preferably with a fab or with a paper scissors. Okay, got one. Got my paper scissors. So I'm gonna trim these out with a little edge. So I'm gonna keep like. Eh, a sixteenth to an eighth of an edge. I'm just going to kind of cut in the middle of some of these pieces. There we go. So there is um, one piece. I still get confused with, I said this earlier, but with this steam -a seam of which side is which, because they both have actually two sticky sides and they both have two papered sides. And you know, it's used for more than just like this little applique stuff like this. So that's, I mean, I can see why the double sided stickiness would help in some fashions, but it, it just, it just ends up confusing me a little bit, but we'll get it right. 
they're both both sides are um are usable so even if we put it on the wrong sticky side it's going to be fine Okay, this will be a trick to cut out this little skinny piece. So again, this skinny piece is actually, in the instructions, a bias strip. So you take the two sides of a long strip and fold them to the inside, and then you fold them again. And then you get this little skinny strip that has perfect little edges. Uh, I'm not doing that, just because I thought maybe applique would get it done. Get it done a, a wee bit click, uh, quicker. Oh, have a good, oh man, it's 5 a.m. by you, Irene. Yeah, have a good, have a good rest of your night. One of these days, we'll do another uh, Saturday sewing session. Not, not tomorrow, not, uh, not this Saturday, but one of these days we'll do it again, because that's kind of nice, because then some people um, who don't usually get a watch because of the time difference can, can view. Otherwise, for everyone else, it's just in the morning. But yeah, so we'll we'll give that a go some time again. Yes, Tracy. So this is steam a seam. So yeah, the steam a seam too. I have a link for it uh, in the in the post here too. If you guys are interested in trying it out, uh, I have just started using it for the Splendid Sampler too. So it's relatively a new product for me. I'm used to um, like a heat and bond lights. Or let's see, what's another one? Oh, what you're looking for is a fusible web. So it has two, two fusible sides to it, and one, um, one has a paper backing typically. This one has two paper backings, plus it's sticky on both sides. So not only does it fuse, it sticks. So it's kind of like removable tape that I can move around. Um, you know, if I if I put my piece together here, it will be uh, I can uh, move it to the iron and it won't fall everywhere because it'll be st sticky. So it's kind of fun. I like the stickiness aspect of it, but it's still it's just different than what I'm used to. So I have to I have to double think. Um, I'm not sure what the difference between steam -a seam 2 and the regular steam -a seam is. Uh, I, I remember looking for just steam -a seam and only really came upon the steam -a seam 2. I, I'm wondering if it's just not a renaming of the same thing. Or maybe it's because it has the sticky sides. I don't know if normal steam -a seam had have the, the like double sticky sides. You have the heat and bond. Oh, and, and you just use it and it works great. Yeah. And my mom, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but we made a cool wool applique when I was visiting my parents. And uh, my mom uh, had a fusible web and I'm not sure if it was heat and bond light. I think it was something else. And I, I forget what that was, but all, all those different brands have them. But yeah, it's always so scary going down that that aisle at like Joann's or where, wherever it is where all the interfacing and, and fusible webs and all that. You're looking for a paper backed fusible web. The paper backed usually means that it's fusible on, um, fusible on both, both sides and you get to fuse one side first by ironing on the paper and then you take the paper off and get to fuse the other side. Oh, Wonder Under. Yeah. I think Wonder Under is what my mom was using. That's that's another brand. That worked fabulous with the with the wool. Okay, we got our pieces. So, uh, let's uh put this away here. Okay. So, we do need a we do need to cut out a background still. So, maybe maybe we'll take a 2 second break here and cut ourselves a background. I think we'll Oh, we'll do just as the instructions say, we'll cut a seven inch by seven inch piece. Again, that's bigger than what we need. Ultimately, we need a six and a half inch piece, but um, with applique and needle turn applique, it kind of uh, kind of can scrunch in on the back as you stitch. Like you, you keep kind of gathering more bulk behind your stitching. And uh, um, 
it shrinks the whole background. So if we start with a seven inch size piece, that should um, help us out a bit. So, and that's what the instructions have too. So let's go in our bin. This is my fabric bin for this, this project. And for my background, I am doing, I'm doing white for all of my backgrounds. So we'll just grab this for now. Let's give it a little press quick. And uh, then uh, um, we'll trim this out. So maybe I don't want my stuff that has fusible on it to be near the iron while I press. So, all right, clear that away. Okay, we'll get our seven inch piece right from here. Oh, you drew the six and a half inch frame on your fabric so you, so you can measure placements. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll give that a try too. You can cut out the inside of the sticky so the layers aren't so stiff. Huh. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to imagine that, Bonnie, but maybe maybe that'll make sense when we get that far. Okay, so here is our square. I'm gonna get my big ruler out just so I can get um, get some nice edges. So I'm going to get the seven inches. I always have to count, especially with these rulers. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll go right there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there. Really, this square edge probably isn't all that important because we're going to be trimming it down later. Okay. Just clip that little piece. Let's rotate it around. All right, and then we'll get on that seven inch edge here again. Ooh, maybe I didn't cut enough on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm horrible. Can't trust the ruler. Gotta count it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I did leave a little edge there. Okay, so here's our seven inch square, and I think I am gonna try uh, throwing that quarter inch edge. Or maybe, you know what, maybe instead of doing that, I do have my six and a half inch ruler. Maybe when I place the design, um, I'll just, uh, eh, I can't really tell. I was thinking I could lay my, my ruler underneath my fabric and then see, see where I'm placing it. But I think I'll just kind of center it here. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And I'm just gonna put a couple dabs of the water soluble ink here. You've heard it called a windowing. The fusible just comes on a. F oh, okay, Sharla. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think this is actually recommended by, I think, Pat on a block during the Splendid Sampler one. We could give, well, maybe we won't do that this time, but I'll, I'll explain it a little bit here. And, um, We'll maybe do it next time. Uh, but first of all, so I just put marks on the corner and then kind of one on the edge, just enough so I can kind of eyeball where that six and a half inch point is. Cause we do have to kind of place things real nice. Um, and this will help with that. But for now, I'm gonna put that to the side. Oh, the measurements, the pattern measurements are placement are based on the seven inch square. Okay, so I probably didn't really have to do that. I might not totally measure, I might just eyeball it, but, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we need to pick some fun fabrics now. So I'm, I'm only gonna use uh, my creamy blonde color fabrics. So let's, let's 
pick. So I think I want to start, let's pick a bird color. Let's see what it looks like on white. So here's some white. We'll pick a bird color. So I probably want the bird to be kind of bold. So maybe, maybe this, although maybe this has too many dark spots in there and it'll make our, our bird look like it has spots all over. So maybe that's not a good idea. We could just go brown. We could just do like a brown bird and maybe Maybe like, yeah, so like a, like a finch. Finches are just brown. So maybe we'll do the brown bird with this little kind of, you know, uh, swirly uh, first feather thing there, wing. Then maybe, then maybe we go like a little bit more for the, for the outside. So that's like a little finch. I like it. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I think I think let's go with this for the bird. Yeah, a sparrow. What did I say? Oh, I said a finch. Yeah, it's like a sparrow. Exactly. You're right, Bonnie. And then maybe for the little plant it's sitting on, maybe there we go a little brighter with the yellows or something. I like that idea. Uh, so, okay, let's just go with this for now. Um, we'll figure it out as we go, the colors. But for now, let's decide that this is the bird. Oh, I got to figure out these two. Oh, one thing I wanted to do, I have all these scraps. So I save all my scraps. I have my bigger scraps in here and my smaller scraps in a different um, little plastic bin. Or like, So here are my totally small scraps, like my little shavings. I, I probably can't use this for much. So I have that in a small tin here. But these ones I have, they're a little bit bigger. So we could see what we got in here. Yeah, like, you know, we could add some of this to the tail or something. Let's see what we have. Oh, here's, here's a little swirly one. Maybe this is big enough for our, yeah, I don't think that's, I don't think that's quite big enough for our, for our um, inside piece. Although maybe it is, here it is. Oh, ooh, look, it fits. Okay, I forget how small these things actually are. So let's, we'll just go bit by bit here. Um, I don't need this big piece anymore because I'm going to use this small version. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's check the scraps before we get too far. So here we go. This is um, the the bigger kind of le or the bigger kind of feather wing. Oh, Pam, I'm sorry, yours is skipping tonight. Yeah, just uh, check in with um, the replay for sure. Okay. So I'm gonna take this backing off. So typically on a, on a different brand, this backing wouldn't even exist. So this would be the side with the glue on or the like glue iron on dots. But in my case, it has this extra little bit. There we go. So on the wrong side of the fabric, <laughs> I've, I've put it on the right side on accident. So now I'm going to put this down onto the fabric. And normally I would fuse this down with the iron. But the steam -a seam is sticky. So I might skip that part altogether. I might just trim this right now before I move on to any other thing. I think I'm going to do that. Why not? So I'm going to... Just, uh, first I'll just trim this so I have, don't have all that um, hanging out there. I mean, it'd probably be better to, to, to press this first just to make sure that one size is fused, side is fused, but let's give this a go. I haven't tried this without fusing. So now, normally, so if you're using a different brand, pr press it right now. So all your pieces, all the edges should be fused. And then after it's fused, then you cut on this nice line. And that's going to be the perfect edge of your fabric. Again, I'm not quite sure how this is going to fly for us. But we'll give it a go. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, our piece is pretty intricate. You know, there's a lot of little pieces happening with this bird. So I'm wondering if this steam -a seam is maybe not a great idea because it has that sticky side. 
maybe I don't want it to all stick all at once because I want to kind of shimmy things around a little bit. So maybe I don't, maybe the steam -a seam is not the best for, for this. I mean, I, I could leave the paper side on, but you know, typically once you get it all laid out, you wanna, you want it to just, um, you just wanna fuse. Yep, I'm doing raw edge applique on this block, Deborah. Okay, that's a nice swirly bird, bird wing. So let's see if I have, oh, I think I do. Here we go. Here's what I wanted. Oh, wait, this is some crazy scrap. Maybe, uh, maybe it's big enough though that I can put the, um, the smaller wing on. Yeah, it's a little small. Let's see if I got another one in here. No, that's too seam allowancey. I don't think we have it um, in scraps. And I think we don't have like another really good beige color in the scrap. So I think I think we're gonna go ahead and use the real one here again for the for that smaller wing. And we have you know, I have little scrappy areas in this. So on the wrong side again. And let's take that paper off, that back again. Yours probably does not have this paper backing on. If you're using any other brand, let's stick it in there. Fits perfectly in that little spot. Again, let's, let's, uh, let's give this a try without actually pressing it since I can with this steam -a seam because the steam -a seam sticks. Sticks without ironing. All right, so here's that second wing. And I think I can actually place this on top of the other one right away, which would be kind of cool. I'm right on that pencil line again. Going slowly just so I can get that nice curve. Moving the paper, not the scissors. <laughs> that was, uh, I remember that specifically being like a, a kindergarten epiphany that, that you move the paper, move what you're cutting versus moving the scissors around it. I remember the teacher telling me that once uh, when I was cutting something and blew my mind a little bit. All right, so this I can, my little wing, I can just stick on here right away, I think. If I can get this paper off, um, so if I, I think if I scrape a little X in there, I should be able to pull off this paper from the center because I don't want to pull it off the edge because I don't want to be handling, I don't want to be like rubbing my finger on this nice cut edge that I just did. So let's, I think I can just, you draw just an X in the middle and you pull from the middle out. And this should be that second piece of paper. So hopefully this comes out without me having pressed the other side yet. Yep, this side is sticky too. And then this paper should just come off. There we are. So again, the benefit of the steam -a seam is I can start putting my applique pieces together without uh, even ironing. So I'm gonna just eyeball, I'm gonna use this, but if you really wanna get this right, actually, why don't we do it so we really get it right? I'm going to get my uh, light table out here again. Oh, the steam seam Vicky bubbled up after washing. Okay, that's interesting. I have not, this is my first kind of um, experience with steam seam so I haven't ever washed it before. So that's interesting. I don't like, I don't like that that might happen. Oh, well, we're in it now. We'll see, see how it goes. Okay, so if you want to get this real right, you can put your um, pieces down here and I can kind of see, I can see the line for the piece underneath. So I can just lay this on top. It goes over the edge a little bit, which is kind of cute. But here, see, because it's sticky, it's kind of a little difficult to move around. But there we go. Now it's perfectly, uh, perfectly where it's supposed to be on top there. Okay. Ooh. 
So we got our first little piece together here. I'm going to just kind of let that live on the side. So it does have this little overlap, um, but that's, that's in the design as well, which is kind of cute. So I do have a little sticky exposed there, but I think that's fine. Okay, let's do the bird next. Um, so I'm pretty sure I don't have a piece big enough for that. So we're gonna we're gonna get it right from from here a little a little sparrow. Oh, it gummed up your needle. Okay, so that's interesting too, Robin, because on the packaging for the steam a seam it says I won't gum up your needle specifically. So. <laughs> We'll see how true that is. We did use this on that flower block. Oh, I forget what it was, but that flower with the circle in it. I think I used it. I used it for. Um, I used the steam a seam for for that. There. I'll go right there. Squish her down. All right, nice scissors, where did you go? All right, again, I'm just gonna cut myself out this chunk because it's annoying to cut precisely with a whole giant thing of fabric hanging out behind you. Okay. Squish this edge down. Again, I could press it at this point so it sticks permanently to the one side, but with the steam -a seam too, I'm just skipping that. We're gonna just, since it's sticky, it's got that sticky side. Both sides are sticky. Maybe that's why it is called steam -a seam 2. Maybe the 2 stands for that both sides have are sticky. So it kind of looks like it might be um, getting sticky on my scissors, which I don't like. But oh well. You never had problems with the heat and bond though. Yeah, so we tried the heat and bond with the elephant and it didn't stick. And someone mentioned that, oh, if you have the heat on it too long, if you have the heat, like the iron on too long on the heat and bond, then sometimes the stick will go away, which I had never heard of before, but has happened to me before. So I wonder if that's, that's true. The other thing is I could just have really old heat and bond and really old, um, what's that other brand that starts with a W? Uh, I, I've had those forever, so it's probably time to just toss it and, and get fresh stuff. That might be, that might be my real issue. But in the last Splendid Sampler, a lot of people mentioned this steam -a seam so I thought I'd give it a go. Yeah, here, look, it's getting, it's getting, um, goo on my nice, nice scissors, so I'm gonna have to wipe that off when I'm done. Okay, so let's... Oh, I think we could we could place our wing right away too. I mean, there's going to be a lot of stickiness here, but you know we're not doing anything with it, so I, I can just let it hang off the edge. Oh my god, it's already so cute! Look at it, it's a little it's a little finch. Love. You were hoping that steam a seam would be a good product because you can reposition it. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm hoping too. I mean, so far. Nothing's perfect, which is a bummer. I mean, this is a nice, this is a nice little detail because you know I wouldn't be able to do any of this yet uh, with with a different type. Uh, but since it does have that stickiness, it's working fine for us here. So I just put another X in here so I can stick this wing onto the bird. Paper doesn't want to come off this time. Try a different part of the X. There we go. That got to the edge. Now it should be easier. There we go. Now it's coming. See how goopy that side is. Okay. So we're using our light table again here. And I'm going to just place this. So I don't want to stick down there because I don't want it to stick to the paper, but. I can kind of align it, kind of kitty scratch it around a little bit. There, I think that's 
It's looking all right. Let's just leave it there. Try not to stick it on anything. That's a pretty strong stick here. Right? Wipe those scissors with a dab of eucalyptus oil and a tissue. Ooh, cleans glue and sticky stuff off. Wonderful. Wonderfully. Okay, Nolene, I will try that. I think I have some eucalyptus oil even. Okay. There we go. Our little birdie. So cute. Let's see. How are we doing on time here tonight, guys? Oh, we got some time yet. Let's try and let's let's try and finish this bird up real quick. You know, maybe we stick with Maybe we stick with these kind of browns. They're looking awfully cute. I'm just gonna lay this here so it doesn't stick to the paper. Yeah, let's stay with some of these browns. Digging the scraps again. Maybe we just reuse uh, more of the same. Oh, that's, that'd be awfully pretty. I like the idea of maybe that, maybe the big triangle is this color. Yeah, maybe let's reuse stuff. The big triangle can be that color. And then I think the small triangle, we can maybe use this scrap. Yeah, then we're repeating. We're repeating some stuff a little bit. Good. That's what we're going to do. Um, all right. So, ooh, is that big enough, though? I think it's just big enough for this scrap. Ha! Perfect. Love using scraps. So let's take the, the easy side off. Okay, I didn't really press these, but we're going to press them again later, so I don't care so much. Perfect. Okay. Oh, there's also um, a product by Floriani Quilters Select that has um, Robin saying that's, that's a feasible web with the sticky on both sides. And I keep misplacing my scissors. It's always hiding. Okay, I'm cutting real nice on that line again. I would love to get these all pressed onto my my white paper tonight, but I don't know if I'll get that far. All right, let's let's um get this guy on here. It overlaps the edge a little bit, and that that edge is sticky. I got that exposed, so I think I think we'll be able to stick that. Oh wait, we should get the other one. We should get the other guy done first, because they both stick underneath that edge. So let's let's do that one first. Can I lay the background? Oh, yeah, I could lay the background on top of this. Yeah, let's do that, Deborah. You're totally right. We can we can for sure do that. Yeah, then I can get this bird on. Oh. Well, okay, so let's tonight at least get this stem on. We'll get the stem and the bird onto our fabric tonight. And then if we don't have enough time, we'll get these other guys on, on later. So we'll we'll finish up this bird. I need that, I need the other tail piece. Here we are. And can we go this way? Yeah. Paper off. Yeah, we'll get we'll we'll do that stem piece. We'll pick some color for that stem. We'll get that stuck on and we'll get this bird stuck onto our fabric tonight. But yeah, I think you're totally right. Let's use that. We'll use um we'll still have to measure a little bit just but you know, it's kind of just centered in there. So maybe we'll just eyeball it. But yeah, let's get that done tonight at least. That'll feel good. Then I won't have all these pieces everywhere. Then maybe we'll push through to get, get these other four little pieces done too. But yeah, it would be nice to have the main, the main pieces on. But yeah, I like this idea of having the light table um, to place everything here. That's been working real well so far tonight. So let's do it now for, for this bottom tail part. So I'm going to take that, take the bit off of this bottom tail and we're going to, or the, you know, that the tail detail, let's call it that. And we'll stick it on top of the main tail. We have so many little sparrows, uh, at our house that just hopping around. I know sometimes they, they're kind of like a nuisance bird, but I just think they're so pretty and cute. So I'm, I'm happy this is turning out to be a little sparrow. Makes me happy. Okay. 
that's placed in this guy. I can't really see through it very well there, but I think that will do it right there. So it's going to be pretty subtle with this, with the browns, but I think I'm going to like it. I'm going to like it a lot, actually. All right, so this, the sticky side is exposed. Let's place this right away. So I'm holding that down, kind of getting that in place. Ooh, it's barely, it's, it's holding on by barely anything, but I think this is sticky enough that it'll hold. Yeah, see, so this is, this is just stuck on this tiny like eighth inch edge, but there we go, it, it's still, just totally sticking. I'm digging, I'm digging the steam seam now, now that I can just stick. I haven't pressed anything yet either, you guys. So um, this is working fabulously. All right, so let's set this guy aside quickly and pick something for, for this stem. So let's turn this off. Actually, let's, let's lay this on here so we can help choose a stem. And I, I think for the stems, let's go with something a bit brighter. Oh, you love him. Yeah, I think it's just a fun, it turned out to be a fun color, I think. All right, let's, let's, I want something brighter. So I wonder if we go just super bright. We could just go super bright and do, do this guy. Or maybe he's the leaves. This is a nice one too. I just kind of like scrunching it up to get kind of a proportion of what it might be like. Or I still really like this this fabric. That could be fun. It's a little orangier. It has some kind of fun color that might pop in every once in a while. That might add some interest to the stem. Then we could do some florals or some some other bold prints for the rest of it. I think we'll do that. Let's let's just let's just go with it. check in the middle. I thought you were going to check, use the check. Oh, you're totally right. I did do that wrong. <laughs> I was going to use the check there. Now it's kind of blending into to this guy, isn't it? Eh, I think the check would have been better, but oh well, we're stuck there now. You're right. That was supposed to be the check. Boo. But he's still cute. Okay, let's get... Yeah, it would have been cute with the check. Ah, well. Now, now the check's maybe a little bit more special from being in the top, but I thought, yeah, I wanted the check so it wouldn't blend in with, with that guy. But, you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna stitch this so the stitching will kind of outline him, I think, a little bit. Okay, so here's that delicate one. So again, this is the one that really should be, um, this one should be the bias strip, but I'm I'm skipping that one. I'm I'm skipping the bias strip way of doing it and just doing it raw edge applique. So I, I didn't really want to bo bother with the um with the raw edge. Oh, that's fine, Jennifer. Oops, losing. Man, I'm gonna have to, uh, I have a mess over here. I'm gonna have to clean up all these papers when I'm done. Let's try and, it's sticky, so it wants to stick right away. I don't wanna use up too much fabric either. This one, maybe I should have pressed the fabric beforehand, but, ugh, now I can't even get it on the fabric. That's on the fabric enough. That's on the fabric enough. All right, let's squish it down. This is the wrong side. So the, the right side is um, right there. It is pretty this side though too. Okay, let's trim that. Scissors. So I wanna get at least these parts done tonight. This, this particular stem and the bird. Let's get both of those stuck on. And then we can add the other little details. 
Okay, let's trim this up as nicely as I can. So again, this is should be that bias strip, but I'm cheating in, in raw edge appliquing it. So hopefully I can get it to match up nicely. Cutting carefully. All right, one side. Ooh, this inner curve might be a little more difficult to do. Eh, I suppose we'll snip that off. Ooh, now my fingers are in the way too. Eee, this is why this is a bias strip and not, not a raw edge applique. Tiny fingers and oh, I don't want to cut my fingers off. And I still want a nice smooth edge too. Should maybe cut this edge first. Yep, I should have done the inside cut first before the outside. Then I would have had more to hang on to and the outside cut's gonna be easier anyway. Now ah, well, we made it through just fine. <laughs> All right. Snip that off. Oh, use a clip. Oh, Robin, that would have been a good idea. Just put a wonder clip on one of the edges and then my fingers would have been out of the way. Great idea. Okay, so uh, let's, ooh, that's gonna be fun. Oh, cute, so I did get a little bit of that purple in. Um, that'll be nice. Uh, let's get the, uh, our white, our white background out now and let's, Let's give this a go. So I'm gonna grab the rest of the instructions just to kind of make sure we map this out right. So the instructions have a, uh, um, you know, a, an area where it should be about one and three quarter from the bottom and one half on top and the edge. I think that's just, we wanna get that kind of centered in there. And this is that seven inch block. So our bias strip kind of runs off the side. And remember, once we sew it in, you know, we have this quarter inch here, but we got to get rid of another quarter inch um, when we sew. So you don't want that circle super close to the edge. So let's just kind of center it and then we'll measure and see, see how we did. So if this really goes to that seven inch side, then it should be kind of like right here. Just grab a ruler just because to check all right so they're saying five eighths inch this guy should be off the edge so one two three four five all right so i, I need to scooch it over just a hair probably like that Five. maybe a hair more <laughs> we're getting all real exact here okay and from the bottom one and three quarters approximately from the bottom of the bit so that's one and three quarters yeah maybe a little less one and a half from the top yeah so let's scooch up a hair a little kitty scratch. All right, that'll about do it. We're sticking to right here. Actually, I might scooch it a little a ways away from that circle still. Okay, we're going with it. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first, ooh, did I just shake it all over the place? I think it, I think it's staying there yet. Oh, my Block looks awfully crooked though on my paper, so we're gonna angle it a little bit more. All right, the end. I'm not gonna fuss with it anymore. We're gonna just do it right here. So let's uh, let's get a little crisscross in the back of this paper. 
we're going to do this first because it's the lowest most piece. It's the lowest piece in this entire thing, the most background piece, I suppose. So that, that guy's going on first, and then we'll work our way up higher, which right now we are, we've already assembled the bird, so um, he's already layered. Okay, this is going to be a hair tricky. Oh yeah, I could tape this down. I think once we get this on, it won't be so hard. Maybe I can just get it to kind of float on top and place it a little bit. Ooh, I do want it to overlap this flower though, because that circle is going to go on top. I'm just going to get my hands down here to keep it in place. Overlap that circle. Now work our way down. Again, this is probably why the bias strip would have been real nice here. You can just kind of form it wherever you want. There, I think we got it. That's looking good. Okay, let's, um, let's get that bird on. So the bird, I have to take the paper backing off of that yet, so I'm just putting an X in um, the bird in the bird and the um, tail papers. I haven't taken those off yet. Yeah, this is actually, you're, um, you're right, this is going to be pretty bulky with all, all of these layers of fabric and all this fusible. I could have done this in a way where I just put fusible on the edge and then I don't have it going all the way through, but I think, you know, we're getting it done in a way that's quick and easy, so. I think I'll just do a, a little straight stitch to stitch these down with just my normal 50 weight thread. Just because this is already kind of delicate, I don't want to do that big hefty 12 weight thread like I did for that flower. It was cute on the flower, but I think it might be a little much for, for this guy. So we'll just keep it a little, a little, um, a little, just straight stitch. All right. Yeah, a little tweezers would be good here, but I think we did pretty well. I think that's, I think that's in the right spot. Yeah, let's, he doesn't have any weird bumps anywhere. Let's get this guy down. Okay. Oh, yes, um, Iris, I'm here 8.30 Central Time. So it's 9.30, 9.30 Eastern Time is, is when I start. It used to be an hour later, but um, that, was, that was a couple of years ago, I think, actually. Okay, so let's see, how are we doing on time? I think we'll stop there for now, but we got the bulk of it. The rest should be super duper easy. So this is all stuck on, oh, you know what? Let's press it. Let's stick it on for reals. So we haven't pressed this at all yet, which is kind of the neat magic of this Steam Seam 2, um, that, that I did this all by just having those sticky edges, but it's not permanent yet. It's permanent um, when we when we press it. So I'm just going to heat up my iron here again. Um, nope, uh, it's 9.30, 9.30 um, Eastern time. Ooh, this orange just pops. Oh, it's so sweet. I love him. Okay, so I'm going to give it a press for real. Hi, Nada. Oh, I'm really happy with the bird. I had no idea what I was going to do, how I was going to do the bird, because um, it's so cute in the, in the um, design, in the designer's design with all the bright colors and everything, but it feels like my little birdie's out my window now. Just a little, little gray sparrow, or, or a little brown sparrow. So I'm not even, I'm not sure this is heated up all the way. So I think we'll just let that be. Um, luckily, it does have that stick, so um, we'll be able to do it. Yes, Iris, so this will stay on Facebook, and it will also be on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. That's where my replays 
uh, the best place to watch the replays are, but also on Facebook on the Penguin and Fish page. They'll live there um, as well. So there we are, guys. Um, so we do still have we do still have the dots or the, the those two circles of the flower and these leaves to go, but we have the pieces cut out, and I can just I can just stick these in with um, in with our in my binder. So whenever we work on this guy again, uh, we'll we'll have them ready to go. And um, so I'm gonna flip you guys around, and we'll take a look at this quick. Okay, so I'll show you just so you can see like a size comp comparison with a person and uh, um, we'll, we'll take it from there. I think it's cute. I think you can still kind of tell what it is from far away. Uh, yeah, and up close you got those different patterns. I like that this is so much brighter than the bird, which is kind of typical of a little sparrow. I love it. Okay, cool. So uh, we're going to leave this here tonight. I am not going to work on this tomorrow like I normally would because tomorrow is Finish It Friday and I'm going to do some improv piecing uh, for the back of my I Love Home Quilt by Jacqueline Steves that we worked on a while back. So Finish It Friday is the first Friday of every month. We take a project that we just let sit around for a while, an unfinished project, and um, bring it out and we, uh, we uh, try and get a little further on that project. And every time I've done that, it's been the catalyst for me of getting that project done. Like all of a sudden I really want to work on it and I, I push through and uh, keep working on it after that. So it, it doesn't go back in the bin, which is awesome. So we'll do that, uh, that improv piecing and see how far we can get on the back. So thanks so much, guys. I'll get this on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, but I just adore him. He is so freaking cute, little birdie. So awesome. Good luck on your birds, and feel free to show them in the penguin, on the Penguin and Fish Crafters page. I'd love to see it there. So have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Good night.